Thank you for joining us for today's message. We believe we can go anywhere in the world from right here in Lamarck, Texas and reach people just like you. If you'd like more information about Abundant Life, please visit ALCC.org. You can also text the number below if you would like to support the church financially. Be ready for a powerful message that's going to impact your life. Out of the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, and I want to speak to you about overcoming things that you have to deal with all of your life, finding out that that is in the Scripture. And then I want you to see from the Word of God this morning that God wants you victorious in all different times, environments, places. Uh, you're never too young to be victorious and you're never too old to be victorious. You can always be victorious. Amen? In the book of 2 Samuel, chapter 5, and they'll put it up on the screen. Do y'all mind if I use my readers right here today? Praise the Lord. Why is everyone smiling so big today? It's a great day. Thank you. I rejoice with you. 2 Samuel chapter 5, and I'm going to read, beginning in verse 17, I'm going to read about six or eight verses. So let, let's um, just hear it. Here it comes. Verse 17. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David to be king over Israel, look at this next word. All the Philistines came up to seek David, and David heard of it, and David went down to the hold. The Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Interesting word. The word Rephaim is the uh, Hebrew word for giants. It says he just spread himself out in the valley of the giants. Have you ever noticed how the devil will always try to make himself bigger? How many of you are glad that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world? So David inquired of the Lord, look at verse 19, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up, for I will doubtless, I will doubtless, I will without a shadow of a doubt, absolutely, I promise you, I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. David ought to have figured that out by now. He's been killing them for quite a few years at this point. And David came to Baal Perazim. And David smote them there and said, The Lord has broken forth. Listen to that. The Lord broke through upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Oh, hallelujah. That's an interesting term right there. The word breach right here is a word that uh, it, it defines uh, a word that's used for a woman uh, who is pregnant. And right before she has a child, uh, her water will break. I hope I'm not uh, spilling the beans to anybody here that doesn't understand that yet. So mom and dad, I just helped you out if you're trying to tell that to your children. But that will literally take place. And out will come, of course, your joy. Here will come your child. All of those wonderful things will take place, but there's been a buildup. And then at the right time, uh, the Bible says there is a breach, there is a break forth, there is a breakthrough. And David, God tells David, uh, with that anointing that was in David, what a powerful young man he was, uh, that anointing that's in him, that God is breaching, he is breaking forth against your enemies. I want you to remember this as I finish this little reading today. David has been fighting Philistines since he was a teenager. And they are always showing up at certain times in his life for the next 60 years or so as we read about his life. Uh, I can just say this to you. Do not be surprised if a lot of the issues that you had to get victory over from the time you were a child don't sometimes try to show up in your life. I'm preaching real good right now. So you have to kind of be careful about telling people what you used to do because you're also telling them what you have to fight off still today sometime. That's such good preaching if somebody understood it. And David came to Baal, Baal Perazim. 
and he smote them there. And he said, the Lord hath broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Therefore, he called the name of that place Baal Perizim. The word Baal Perizim is a, a, an interesting word in Hebrew there. Obviously it means breakthrough, but it also means the one who possesses or the one who owns the breakthrough. The owners, the possessors of breakthrough. Oh, hallelujah. That literally says, just like when, uh, if a woman has a baby, everybody's going to learn about it. Everybody knows about it. Everybody knows what took place. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun when it comes to that. Uh, everybody understands that's happened, but it doesn't make any difference. That, that victory, that breakthrough, that baby only belongs to that mother. Amen. Mother and father understand. Belongs to that one person that had the breakthrough. We just all know about it. And we're all happy. And about 90% of the time, we look at that little baby and something goes off on the inside of us like, man, I wish I had another one that young. And then you get back sane and everything and you're fine. And, uh, you know, you just take an aspirin, go to bed, wake up, you'll be okay in the morning. But uh, no, there's just something that's in your nature. You want that. You're drawn to it. You just think it's precious. It's it's good. Uh, But it only belongs to that one person. Every person has to have their own breakthrough. Amen. Give me a big amen. amen. Listen, just because the Bible says all the spiritual blessings in heavenly places are in Christ doesn't mean that they're automatically going to happen. It happens for the person that has the breakthrough, that has the faith through, the person that obeys God, the person, it's one-on-one. I wish I could pray this uh, corporate prayer that every single person in the body of Christ and every person at Abundant Life would have the exact same uh, results from God every single time they pray or every single time I pray. I wish everybody got the same thing. But uh, first of all, uh, that's not going to happen because my name's not Jesus. Secondly, your relationship with God is one-on-one. You definitely are a part of something that you can amplify Spiritually, you can amplify. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. God is your God. That's why it's necessary to be together in the house of God, because uh, sometimes there are things that seem like are ju- the answers are just not coming, and it might be something that you've had to uh, resist, stand against, fight against, deal with for many, many years that maybe shows up again periodically. I don't know why God had me preach this today, but I know I'm talking to some, uh, somebody right now. Uh, but God is saying that as you press through and you do not take it for granted, I, I like something about David. Every time that you see David come against an enemy, uh, almost every single time, almost every time, and you'll see him numerous times uh, in the Old Testament. When you see him come against an enemy, he stops and he asks God about it. And oftentimes it's the same enemies, the same battlefields, the same areas he's fought. He's had victory after victory, because if you lose those victories, you die. So he's had victory after victory after victory, and uh, the battle's still going on, and uh, he has been anointed. And as soon as his enemies find out that he has been anointed to be over all uh, of Israel, suddenly all of the enemies show up at one time. It says all the Philistines showed up. Have you ever had a time in your life where you feel like all hell just came against you? I've been there. Uh, I've been there uh, many times uh, when I know God is moving us in a certain direction. It'll look like uh, some things have happened. I don't want to discuss them, but I can just tell you there have been plenty of attacks and plenty of things that are like that. But in those times, especially, you still inquire of the Lord. Even if you know that God's not going to abandon you, he's not going to forsake you, somehow you're going to have the victory. Don't take it for granted that your yesterday's prayer was good enough for today. 
if you don't do anything other than thank the Lord that he's the God of breakthrough. He's the God of victory. I believe God's saying in here this morning, there are some people in 2021 that you are going to experience breakthroughs because you would not back off, but you continued to inquire of the Lord, even if it was the same old battles that you had before. What I like about David is there's nothing in here that says David gave up, backed off and quit uh, when it comes to some things. No, no, no. He kept stirring himself up. Come on, look at somebody and say, take notes on that part right there. Come on, tell them that. The Bible says, the Lord has broken forth, verse 20, he has broken forth upon my enemies before me as the breach of waters. Maybe I should entitle this message today, How to Birth a Miracle. The, the breach of waters. Uh, or maybe I should just call it, I'll, I'll title it at the end. Is that all right? I think I'll call it maybe something like, how do you look today? You know, you looked in the mirror and you want to know how'd you look today? How about this one? We look not at things that are seen, but things that are not seen. Come on, how'd you look today? Did you see your problem as something that is seen or did you look at the answer, the part that hadn't been seen yet? Are you looking forward or backwards? You've got these three dimensions of thought. Everyone in here does. I don't want to just take us down that trail very long, but I promise you everyone in here thinks three ways. Uh, you have a memory, which is your thoughts from yesterday. Say amen. amen. That's what memory is. A thought of, of a past time, action, deed, conversation, etc. That's what a memory is. Uh, secondly, uh, you have the ability to think and to meditate currently right now. And that's the ability, that's just like having digestion, not indigestion, digestion. So you digest something. And that's what, that's what thought and meditation is. You think about something. You're digesting the facts and you're assimilating. And then you have that part of you that is more miraculous than anything God created. It's called imagination. Amen. And imagination is what you think about uh, in the future or what can be. Are you listening to me? Amen. So you have your memories and you have your meditations and you have your imagination. That's why the apostle Paul said to cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. The, your, your mind is a, it's literally a creative theater. Amen. It's a virtual room and animals don't have imagination. Nothing else has imagination, but you were made in the likeness and the image of God. And so you think, and my experience has always been that my imagination, unless I'm focused on the things of God, about 90% of your imagination ends up with what might go wrong. Something bad that could happen. Am I talking to anybody or is it just for me today? But if you will take those imaginations that are contrary or they are opposite or they are against the will of God, and if you will cast them down, first of all, God said you can cast them down. Do I, can I get a, like one witness in here today? You can change your mind and when you do, you'll change your imagination. And when you change your thoughts, I promise you, you're gonna change your future. You tell me what you imagine and think about and I'll tell you uh, the direction you're going in life real quick. It won't take long to figure that out. Uh, though I don't want that conversation. I'm just telling you, uh, you know that. Analyze that, think about it and cast down imaginations that are opposite of the kingdom of God or that are at enmity, the Bible says, with the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is within you and God's promises, here's the beautiful thing about the Word of God, it is a living epistle. And God wrote it to us from the end to the beginning. Amen. The Bible says you know Him, Ecclesiastes says you know Him from the end to the beginning. He didn't leave very much to your imagination. He's already said it's there, so you think about it. That's why you can go and read the book of Revelation and realize we win. Yeah. 
Come on, at the end of the day, uh, the kingdom of, of uh, God will one day be set on the earth, the Bible says. I know it's a long time from now, but it's already there. It belongs to us. And so you can get your imaginations right. Listen, you may feel sick in your body today, but the Bible says, with his stripes, I was healed. First Peter 2, 24. With his stripes, I was healed. I don't have to imagine what it would be like to be well. I have to uh, look at what he said, what he has already done for us. He did it in the past. He does it in the present. And it's available even in your future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible says what things are lovely, pure, wholesome, Philippians 4, think on these things. And then Paul goes on and he says, for uh, I have learned in all of these conditions therein to be content. He said, I've learned it. And, I, and years ago, I started saying something like this about 30 or 40 years ago, I started saying uh, contentment is not earned. Contentment is learned. He said, I learned to be content regardless of what state I am in, what condition I am in. And so we learn that and we use those capacities that God gave us, our memories, our meditation, our thoughts, and our imaginations. Come on, clap your hands to the Lord if this is making any sense. You have to use it because it will run amok if you, uh, if you fail to use it. And people who do not control their imagination can easily be controlled by people who understand their imagination. Oh, hallelujah. Whole cultures are controlled by that. Fear is the number one thing that hell will use to control you through the fears of your imagination. So it's very important that you realize that not only is your past in Jesus, your present is in Christ, but so is your future. Come on. God has a great plan for you. Uh, your marriage is not going to fall apart if you'll not imagine it falling apart. Yeah. Why don't you start imagining the fact that you're going to be married for a long time to that same person. Oh, I'm preaching so good. And you're going to have a house full of kids and at least one of them will wind up redheaded. That's my prayer. I'm preaching. No, but, uh, and it'll stay together. And uh, the blessing of the Lord will be in your life. Cast down any other kind of imagination. No one can do that for you. Me, Jesus, and all the angels can't do it because he made you with that capacity and he gave you then the responsibility of controlling it. So here David is coming up to Philistines again. Here they are again. Seems like every time you read about David, somewhere in there in that passage, a Philistine will pop up and it's something that he's having to deal with that he's been dealing with once again for many, many years. And now this time, he inquires of the Lord and God says, go up, you'll surely be victorious. And so he goes up, the Bible says, and God worked with him. When you obey God, God works with you. When you don't obey God, you're generally on your own. Somebody say amen. amen. Just because God's with you doesn't mean he's working with you. He didn't kick you out of the kingdom. That doesn't mean he's going to validate uh, anything that you're doing that's contrary to his will. You can do anything you want. If you want God working with you, not just going with you, oh, hallelujah, just be the hands and feet of Jesus. And so the Bible says, therefore he called the name of that place, I own the breakthrough. I possess the breakthrough. Come on, somebody say that out loud. Say, I own the breakthrough. Come on, I possess my breakthrough. That's a powerful thing. Where are those areas that keep showing up and trying to hinder uh, the work of God that's in your life and the plan, the vision that you have uh, for your life? What's trying to stop that? Uh, there comes a day. I don't care if it's the same thing you're dealing with more than once. You'll get that revelation. God has equipped me and through him, I can do all things and I own the breakthrough over this. And when you own the breakthrough, my friend, you are victorious. I don't just own the battle, I own the breakthrough. I own the breakthrough. Come on, shout it out loud. I own the breakthrough. That's what God is saying to us right here. Uh, even though it's something that took David a little while to finally have this type of a victory. He begins to make that great confession. And the Philistines came up yet again. Verse 22. 
and they spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Here they come again. It's like a rerun. Everybody say rerun. rerun. You ever watched a rerun before? Yes. I tell you, I like to tell the story. I'm going to tell it again. This is years ago. I used to watch boxing a lot. I used to like, you know, boxing and wrestling and all that kind of stuff. And, and so I watched it a lot. And I was watching one particular bout. It wasn't a championship bout, uh, but it was, a, it was a very aggressive bout. And I'm just thinking, man, they, those guys are getting with it. And they are going and going and going. And I got about, I don't know, halfway through the first round. And I'm on the edge of the couch watching this. And the next thing I know, this guy throws an awkward punch. And I'm thinking, I've seen that before. And then I realized I'm up there cheering the other guy who's about to get knocked out. I'm cheering him on and I'm watching a rerun. <laughs> That's what this looks like to me. Every time uh, David uh, shows up, uh, it seems like here comes a Philistine. Here, here it comes. It's like a rerun. But David made a decision that even in those reruns, he would still inquire of the Lord. Amen. Are you with me today? The Bible says, so the Philistines came up yet again and they spread themselves in the valley of the giants. Same devil, no new tricks in the valley of the giants. Sometimes you do have to fight the same battle just with different weapons, different ways. I think that's probably one of the most necessary things to learn that even though you have experienced something in the past, you still need to talk to God about your victory today because more than one time in the Bible, God will change the way he did something. Amen. Same outcome but they had to do it the way God told them to do it. Amen. God did not tell uh, the children of Israel uh, forever, every time you come up to a stream of water that you're supposed to hold a rod out in front of it and it's, and it's gonna separate in front of you. You know, there were other ways. One time he told them, throw a stick in the middle uh, of, of something and it'll turn sweet. Another time he said, strike the rock and out came the water. Just because it's water doesn't mean you deal with it the same way. Uh, it's what God was showing us in this life. There are issues. There are everything from finances to health to uh, politics to whatever in the world it is that you are dealing with in your own world, in your own drama. I've got good news. A God is very creative. And when it looks like your adversary sometime is going to get the victory, you just keep talking to God about it. And God may just say, oh, I think I'll do it uh, this time, this way. Just pick up a little rock and throw it and hit the biggest giant. Yeah, God changes the way he does things in your life. Uh, if you listen to him, uh, you'll see that. And it's a, uh, it's a wonderful way to, uh, to live serving the Lord. So David inquired of the Lord, verse 23. My time's almost up. David inquired of the Lord. And the Lord said, you shall uh, not go up this time. Don't go up. I imagine David stopped and went, what? Lord, you've, you've never given me the, that word on the inside that I'm not supposed to go and just attack these guys. This time God said, do not go up. The Philistines came, verse 22. They spread themselves out like giants again. David inquires of the Lord again, but this time God changed it. He said, you will not go up, but fetch a compass, fetch a company of men. King James uses the word compass, a little brigade. Fetch a compass behind them and come up uh, upon them over against the mulberry trees. David's like, hmm, strategies here. I guess we're going to jump out from behind the mulberry trees. We're going to hide and we're going to catch them like that. But you know, God kept talking. And God said, and let it be when you hear the sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, that then shalt thou Stir yourself up, but stir yourself. When you hear a sound of a going in the tops of the mulberry trees, one translation, I'm reading King James, one translation, some of yours will have it, it says, and when you hear a sound of going above the trees, above 
the trees. I think God had a, a big regiment of angels or something that must have been marching through. And he said, so you get over there by those trees where I told you to. And then up in the top of those trees in a little while, you're going to hear something. It may not look strategically right from where the Philistines have positioned themselves, but it's not what they're doing. It's what God tells you to do. He is the commander in chief of your life. And he knows how to get you victory over the same old issues that you've not been able to wipe out. Amen. The Bible says, uh, David, no, don't go up and just face them head on this time. No, you get over here and you get behind the mulberry tree and you listen for a sound. How many of you are glad that there's a sound in the spirit? Amen. There's a spiritual realm that is more real than the natural realm. You see the spiritual realm with your eyes. You actually can hear it with your natural ears too. But God is saying that there are times when you'll begin to see things in the spirit where you are not looking at what you see, but you're looking at what you do not see. That's what God is allowing you to see and understand. For instance, uh, the apostle Paul writes in 2 Corinthians 4, uh, 17, 18, says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, a heavenly uh, answer, a weight of glory, while we look not at things that are seen, but we look at that which is not seen. For that which is seen is a part of this realm. It is temporary. But that which is not seen, it's part of that other realm. And it is eternal. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. That means it's always there. So if you have a, a financial need, let's say in your life, instead of looking at the fact that, that you still need 30% uh, more money you know, to pay all of your bills, why don't you start saying, I'm faithful, I tithe, I offer, and I see my answer coming because I serve Jehovah Jireh. He's the God who supplies every need and I'll just obey him. How do you look today? Are you looking at just natural things or do you step back and make a decision that you're gonna look at spiritual solutions to natural things? That doesn't mean you won't have a natural action uh, or a natural reaction, but it can be spiritual. It can be because of the kingdom of God. You can see what's God's position on that because your answer is tied to an unseen realm until you see it by faith. Come on, somebody shout, God, open my eyes. Come on, say it again, open my eyes. More than one time in the Bible, you see that take place where God speaks uh, like he spoke uh, to Hagar. Hagar, of course, was Abraham's uh, uh, other wife. I'll just say that. And she had a child, Ishmael, and she gets kicked out of the clan. She gets kicked out of the family, out of the family reunion, all of that. Bam, she's gone. And she has to go out there and she puts the boy under the, the bush, under the little tree. How many of y'all know this story in Genesis? Puts him there and uh, off goes mama. She says, I, I'm just gonna turn him over to, to the mercy of God because I can't take care of him out here and there's no water and we're gonna, dry, we're gonna starve, we're gonna die. And she starts crying, the Bible says, and the baby starts crying. And then God heard her prayer and he says, uh, uh, open your eyes or look, see, look that direction. And all of a sudden she looked when God opened her eyes, the Bible says, and she saw water. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody get a little happy in here about this. You can be at what you think is at the end of the rope, but if you'll seek God, God will open your eyes. He'll, he'll lift up, the Bible says. One time, Elijah, you know the story. Elijah, he began to hear the sound of abundance. He told his servant in 1 Kings 17, go and look, go and look, go lift up your eyes, go look. The guy came back and said, I don't see anything. He said, I know that there's a provision. It's in that unseen, but it's gonna manifest. We're not gonna, you keep looking till you see it. He said, go seven times which means total and completion. You keep looking until you see it. You keep praying until you see it. You may not see it in the natural, but once you see it here and you latch onto it in the spirit, you're gonna have it from there to the natural realm. What are you looking at today? Are you just looking at the facts? I know 2020 was tough on some people. It was tough. 
It's amazing. Some businesses went broke and others had the highest financial years they've ever had. Uh, It was almost split down the middle in our nation. The mom and pop stores were really hurt. The big stores are bigger than ever before. There are a lot of uh, parallels that you can see in that. And people just hurt many times. What are you looking at? What are you looking at? God knows how to break through against your circumstance. Look at that which is not seen. Uh, He is Jehovah Rapha. He's your healing and your health. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is your supply. He's your provision. He is Jehovah Shalom. He knows how to put peace in your family, much less in our nation. We just have to act on it. We pray and we keep seeing that. Come on, somebody say imagination. Imagination Imagination was not given to you just to fantasize about some abstract thing in life. No, that's so you can see what God has for you that's not there manifested yet, that you're not experiencing yet. That's why Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things, and I'm gonna use this term right now, things imagined from God, hoped for. Something that hasn't manifested yet, but you can think on it and see it. Use your imagination to do something uh, other than just conjure up, you know, uh, bad little uh, witches and demons that try to harass you at night and cause you nightmares. And all this. No, get rid of all that crazy stuff in life. Use the power of what God has given you to imagine success. Imagine that prosperous family. Imagine uh, you excelling on your job. Imagine that new house. Ooh, I just heard that in my spirit. I'll tell you, that's for someone. Somebody about to get a new house. You've been dreaming about it. You've been thinking about it. You've been praying about it. And it's just about to manifest into this realm right here. I'll tell you, I heard that so strong. Oh, hallelujah. You got to use it. Use it. Don't abuse it. Use it. Use what God has given you. The Bible says, you'll hear a little sound You'll hear a sound. You're not going to see it. You'll hear a sound. You'll hear a sound. You'll hear a sound. God can speak into the now from the word, through a message, through a sermon, through an experience, and you'll hear something on the inside. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? God will just speak to you. So when you do, you latch hold of that. And now you build that imagination, that dream. You build that hope around that because faith gives substance to what you hope for and it is the evidence that you have it before you see it. Hebrews 11, 1. Oh, glory to God. Church, we need faith. That's why when a person sees it and they believe it already, they'll be talking about it. If they're not careful, they'll be talking about it like it's already happened. Uh, Be wise about that. But I'm telling you, that takes place. It's very strong. You got it on the inside of you and you, you just know. Oh, hallelujah. I was reading something about Hel- Helen Keller uh, just uh, this past week. And I think she was one of the most remarkable people that's ever lived uh, for sure. Helen Keller, you know, the blind lady that literally learned how to hear and I mean, uh, how to talk and all of those things, totally blind and, 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 and deaf and all that. And she learned how to talk just like you and me and develop that sign language and all those things. And she had a teacher that just continued to teach her and teach her and teach her. And she said the saddest thing in the world is for people who actually have the ability to see and to walk around in this mystical realm where, we can, where you can see everything and not be able to see the goodness of it. That's Helen Keller. I thought, oh, hallelujah. Lord, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Don't let me get so pigeonholed in one little thought, one little way, one little thing that all of that creative force that you've given us from the spirit all the way through that that little gray matter between your uh, ears there, uh, that it just becomes stifled down and used the wrong way. Come on, somebody say imagine. Imagine the good things. Come on, say it. Imagine the good things. 
Imagine the God things. Imagine that new business. Imagine that new house. Imagine that ministry. Imagine your whole family saved. Filled with the Holy Spirit. Come into abundant life. That's, that's my story. I'm sticking with it right there. It's important. It's important that you don't even let your imagination become polluted or distorted, but train yourself. That's a powerful tool that God has given you. And the Bible says that faith will give substance. So if it's faith, Romans 10, 17, 17, it's something that you've heard from God over and over, His Word. And you focus that faith in. That's where faith comes from, from hearing the Word of God. And you focus that faith on that thing that you are hoping, dreaming, expecting, imagining, that you can see. Uh, more than one time I've talked to people before, and, I, and I'm, I'm finished, I'm done. Listen to this. And they said, well, things have been going good, but... I'm sure it'll change. It'll, it'll go back to normal. It'll get worse before it's over. You ever talk to anybody like that? Oh my goodness. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Who beat you up as a child? Who, who hurt you? Who told you that, that, that your brain was supposed to always think of bad stuff? Uh, when, when you see good, you think bad. Uh, that, that's terrible. God, help us. That's one of the beautiful things about being in Christ. He doesn't just save your soul so you can go to heaven one day. He'll change you from the inside out. Come on, he'll give you that dream machine that's on the inside of you will come alive. Instead of you saying, well, I know 2021 may be worse than 2020. You start saying, I like what I heard Pastor Josh say a moment ago, 2021 is gonna be the best year you've ever had so far, so far. Hallelujah. Got to get it in your inner man. Get it on the inside. Yes. Expect it. Expect it. Maybe bow your head with me now just for a moment. I'm going to ask no one to leave unless you just have an emergency of some kind. Did you ever see yourself saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, serving God? leading your family to the Lord, every single one of them, even that, even that weird cousin you got. I mean, getting them all saved. Come on, everybody's got one of those. Did you ever imagine that? Did you ever hope, expect, anticipate? Or did you just give up on them? God may be trying to give you a new way to reach them. You have to keep inquiring. How about yourself? Did you ever imagine yourself one day living in heaven? Having that, that the great architect of the universe himself, the Bible calls him. In a, in, a, in a mansion that he's built. Did you ever imagine yourself on streets of gold? Did you imagine yourself with great rewards for living for Jesus and serving God? We're all barreling toward that day. What's your imagination? Is it showing you hell or is it showing you heaven today? I've got wonderful news. Jesus is the door. He is the way. He's the road. He's the highway. He's the truth. He is the life. And he cannot tell a lie. And when you make Jesus Christ by faith, your Lord because he defeated death. And by virtue of the resurrection, he has the right to be called the Lord of the living and ruling even over the dead, the Bible says. The Apostle Paul writes in the book of Romans, by virtue of the resurrection, with no one looking around, and this is how we'll do it today. If you say, preacher, I need to give my life to Jesus. I need to be saved. I'm beginning to get a glimpse of living knowing that Jesus is my Lord. Or maybe somewhere in your past you've prayed that, but you've missed God. And you're saying, I want to get back right with God now. If, if you hear either one of those two things, when I count to three, right where you're sitting, I just want you to lift your hand up in the air. Get it ready. I need to get saved. I'm getting back right with God. One, 
two, three. Come on, get it up real high. Let me see it. I see that. Keep it up. God love you. Oh, hallelujah. I believe God has a dream and a plan for you. It's going to come into focus real soon. Glory to God. Anyone else? Lift your hand if anyone else. Lower your hands if you still have them up right now. Just look this way for a moment. I'm going to ask every person to stand up on their feet right where they are. Stand up on your feet. Glory to God. Did you receive this word today? Now listen. If you lifted that hand to say yes to Jesus, or you're saying, I'm coming back home, Lord, I want you to pray this prayer out loud with this church. We're going to all pray it together with you. But pray it out loud. Pray it out loud. Maybe put a hand on your heart and lift the other hand of the Lord. That's where our help comes from. And let's pray this. Heavenly Father, thank you for salvation. You know me, Lord. I need to be saved. I need to be right in your family. Jesus, be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive my sin. Give me a new heart. I want to live for you, Lord. And I shall. Thank you for your blood that you shed for me. Give me a new spirit, a new heart, a new imagination. From this time on, Jesus is my Lord, my Savior. I'm on the way to heaven. I won't look back. Thank you, Lord, for eternal life through Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's give God the praise. Now listen. To learn more, visit WalterHallam.com. You will find a list of resources to help you in your daily walk with Christ.